Good morning. Happy New Year. Welcome to this video for Sunday the 10th of January 2021. We are beginning a new series of readings focusing on divine encounters when people are surprised by the presence of God. Today, we shall be focusing on Moses encountering God when he saw a burning bush in the wilderness and heard a voice telling him, Moses, take off your shoes. The place where you are standing is holy ground. As you prepare for worship, you may want to read Psalm 96 and choose a word or a phrase that will focus your thoughts. And the reading is Exodus 3, verse 1 to 16. Let us pray. God of all creation, you have breathed life into all things and clothed our planet with beauty and wonder. You share yourself with us through creation. God of our stories, we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. And you have clothed us with beauty and wonder. You share yourself with us through one another. God of our scriptures, we are amazed to discover the ways you shared yourself with women and men who lived thousands of years ago. You share yourself with us through their stories. Thank you. God of many names, your name is holy. Teach us again to be confident of all that we know of you through Jesus Christ and to welcome your presence, recognising that you are mysterious and beyond the power of our words, for you are the great I am. You are an awesome God. And we are in awe of you. Through your Holy Spirit, renew within us that combination of wonder, awe and respect that becomes worship. And clothe our hearts with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Moses had long ago made a home for himself in the wilderness, beyond the reach of Egypt, where he could quietly live as a shepherd serving his father-in-law, Jethro, the child who was, who was hidden in the bulrushes, was now an older man. He probably thought his adventures were all behind him. God had another idea. To see a burning bush wasn't unusual. That kind of spontaneous fire often occurred in the heat of a day. But this fire was different. It blazed, but the bush was never consumed. And Moses was curious. It was then, as he drew near, that he heard the voice of God calling him, Moses, take off your shoes. The place where you are standing is holy ground. These are the things that I invite you to notice about this reading. The first is that God calls Moses by name. We are not anonymous or nameless individuals in the sight of God. We are known by name and called by name. Moses is called by name. When someone calls your name, they recognise you as a person, and our names are precious. God calls Moses by name. God calls you by name. He doesn't require ID or give you a number. God calls you by name. 
The second is that when God speaks, he invites a response. And Moses responds to God and says, here I am Lord. God doesn't ask abstract questions. His questions are personal and particular. When you hear God calling, how will you, how will you respond? Here I am is quite a good place to start. Your first response may not be in many words. It may be silence. It may be song. It may be what you do. Moses responds by taking off his shoes when God tells him this is holy ground. Sometimes we are a little shy of physical gestures, but these can be an integral part of worship too. Moses also covers his face because he knows he is in the presence of a holy God. Sometimes we may need to pause and give ourselves permission to experience wonder, awe, and even the fear of the Lord. This doesn't mean we should be afraid. The fear of the Lord is a combination of wonder, awe and respect, a sense that God is very special and that we should never take him for granted. Moses knows there is no sense that he is equal to God. And with his body language, he showed this. This will always be true. God, who is so much greater than us, also makes a promise. But one day we shall see him face to face. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12. In the meanwhile, we can pray that the eyes of our heart will be opened, that we may see the glory of God in all that he shares with us. The third thing is that when God first names himself, he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I love this because it shows that God is known through his relationship with people. The testimony of other people to the faithfulness of God can encourage all of us. We are invited to recognise the presence of God in their lives, even when their lives are full of mishaps, as Abraham, Isaac and Jacob's were. This is remarkable, because it would be easy to think that God in his holiness is far removed from our everyday experience, with all our pain and inconsistencies. But here God tells Moses something quite different. Your story is my story. For I knew and loved your forebears as I know and love you. I am their God and I am your God. God saves even though our lives may be muddy and muddled by inviting us to a new relationship with him through Christ. When we respond in obedience to his call, we give God the opportunity to weave our missteps and mishaps into his plan, just as he did with Moses, who was, after all, a murderer, a renegade from justice, and a man consumed by a hot temper when he was provoked. He is perhaps an unlikely hero. But even he was saved by the grace of God. The fourth is that when our Moses asks who he should say has sent him, what name he should give, God replies, I am who I am. God gives himself a new name that had never been heard before. God replies, I am who I am, which is rendered Yahweh, because the nouns are silent. This is the name that is so holy, the Jews never spoke it and substituted the word Lord, which in our Bibles is usually spelt with capital letters when it appeared in Scripture. There are several important things to say about this name. The first is that it's a dynamic name. It could easily be translated as, I will be who I will be, or I am becoming who I am becoming. 
God is complete in himself and cannot be contained within human expectations or requirements. The second is that God refuses to be defined by any human idea. God can be defined by no one but himself because his name is self-contained. As Isaiah and the prophets would assert, there is no one to whom God can be compared. No one at all. As Moses set off on his great adventure, risking all to challenge the authority of Pharaoh to demand that he set the people free, he does so with the conviction that God has met him in an unexpected and surprising way that revealed his faithfulness and his compassion for his people. God tells him he has heard the cry of his people who are held in bondage. A conviction is reflected in the great African-American spirituals that were sung by enslaved people, such as Go Down Moses, that contains the wonderful line, Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Yet what Moses knew of God required him to live with attention between what he knew and what he didn't. And that's also true of us. It's attention that saves us from idolatry. Creating golden calves, you remember what happened in the wilderness of our own. Moses knew God in a positive way. This was the way of his forebears among whom God had demonstrated his faithfulness and compassion over and over again. Despite appearances, he had never turned his back on his people. Moses knew this, but he also knew the God who spoke to him through the burning bush was utterly mysterious and greater than anyone could imagine. We can't make an image of him as if we could capture his likeness and define him as the Hebrews would later do, seek to do, with the golden calf. He is much greater than that. There will be moments in our long walk of obedience in the same direction, following Jesus Christ, when we sense the presence of God in a very close, unpersonal way. There will also be moments when we are aware of how quite we will be aware of how quite how small we are as we recognise that God is beyond us and will never be captured by us. We need both these experiences for our discipleship and our worship to be healthy and well balanced. Some of us may have experienced many moments like these, some of us less, but God is still God. God is still sovereign and God's purposes are still good. May we continue to grow in his grace as we enter the new year 2021, running the race marked out for us as Gordon encouraged us to do in his pastoral letter last week.